following episode depicts acts of violence and murder. Listener discretion is advised. It's Monday afternoon, October 16th, 1967. A pair of part-time employees at Jack and Felicia's Cafe on Millbury Street are walking through the front door of the restaurant. They're stopped in their tracks as soon as the door swings open. There, lying dead on the floor of the bar, is owner John Jack Zaromsky. A pool of blood is collected around John's head. A sledgehammer is on the ground next to him. Unsolved Worcester is brought to you by the following sponsors. Follow the crowd through the doors of Donut Homies and say hi to Haley Noel, the Donut Queen of Worcester's Canal District. This month, the Specialty Donut Shop features special flavors like strawberry shortcake and champagne glaze. Donut Homies is open inside the Worcester Public Market at 160 Green Street every Wednesday through Sunday at 11 a.m. Online ordering with delivery and pickup options is available at DonutHomies.com. Follow Donut Homies on Facebook and Instagram for monthly menu drops, specials, and more. Donut Homies, everything sweeter with the homies. Welcome back to Season 2 of Unsolved Worcester. I'm your host, Dan Yeager. We stay in the late 1960s for Episode 3, marking the first of a stretch of unsolved murders that all take place in Worcester's Canal District and Green Island neighborhoods. In today's episode, we explore the murder of restaurant owner John Zaromsky in October 1967. John was found dead on the floor of his Millbury Street restaurant, Jack and Felicia's Cafe. Unsolved Worcester will take a deep dive every Tuesday and Thursday into the unsolved murders and missing persons cases under investigation by the Worcester Police Department's Detective Unit. We will be looking to the past to unsolved murders as far back as the early 1950s and 60s. The approach to Unsolved Worcester is this. Shine a light on each of these cases. Put a life behind each victim's name. Provide a timeline of events and important details. And ask questions that still need to be answered. Our goal is to remind residents of the Worcester area, both past and present, that there are dozens of unsolved homicides and missing persons cases that need resolution. We hope we can be the spark needed to solve a case. John and his wife Felicia lived at 46 and a half Providence Street. Today, the three-decker no longer exists. It's now a parking lot for the Church of Pentecost at the corner of Providence Street and Waverly Street. John and Felicia bought the restaurant at 731 Milbury Street in late 1964 from brothers John and Joseph Kopka. Then it was known as Mike's Restaurant. At the time of John's death, the outside of the restaurant was advertising Budweiser and Knickerbocker beer. There was a small parking lot in the back of the building. A sign on the side of the restaurant read, Fine Foods. In the three years that John and Felicia owned the restaurant, they had nothing but bad luck and random acts of violence. In June 1965, roughly six months after Jack and Felicia's cafe opened up, John was attacked in the bar by 28-year-old Richard Swenson. Swenson was arrested for allegedly destroying 14 bottles of liquor, breaking a pair of eyeglasses, and assaulting John at the bar. Swenson had a long list of run-ins at Jack and Felicia's Cafe. 
Like in October 1965, when Swenson got into a fight outside the restaurant, he hit his head on the curb. After walking home to Gibbs Street, still bleeding from his head, Swenson would have to be taken to the hospital for scalp cuts and to be examined for internal bleeding. Just a few months later, in January 1966, Swenson would again be arrested for assault and battery on John Zaromsky inside Jack and Felicia's cafe. Just weeks after John's first run-in with Swenson, in June of 1965, John was closing up the bar on July 11th, 1965, when a pair of men tried breaking into Jack and Felicia's cafe. They smashed the front door glass, but took off on their motorcycles when they realized John was inside. One year later, in July 1966, after being refused service, an unidentified man returned to the restaurant with a 16-pound sledgehammer and started smashing booths and chairs. A customer had to force the man out of the restaurant using a bayonet found in the restaurant's back room. Police didn't identify the man with the sledgehammer, but surprisingly, it's unlikely to be the same sledgehammer found next to John's body in October 1967. We requested police reports from the incident, but the uh, Worcester Police Department's Record Bureau said the records from 1966 no longer exist. In February 1967, John was robbed and beaten inside the restaurant by two young men. John was hit over the head and knocked unconscious. His assailants got away with $100. Up until John's murder later that year, all else appeared quiet at the small Milbury Street Bar and Lounge. John Zaromsky was in a phone booth inside his restaurant when he was attacked by his murderer. Police believe he was struck on the head multiple times with a 12-pound sledgehammer that John had kept in the restaurant's kitchen. According to a report from the Telegram and Gazette, John used the sledgehammer to demolish property he owned on Pattison Street, near his home on Providence Street. John was found with a blood-soaked bar towel under his head. He had fallen to the ground from the phone booth. While well, John's autopsy showed he had a hairline fracture in his skull from repeated blows to the head with the sledgehammer, it wasn't what killed him. A 22 caliber bullet was found lodged in John's brain. He had been shot in the head just above the temple after being hit in the head with the sledgehammer. Police believe John was killed only an hour before his body was discovered by his employees. And even while John was bleeding out on the restaurant floor, one of his employees, William Bovat, drunkenly tried to take advantage of the situation. Bovat was one of the employees who found John dead on the restaurant floor. He had worked at Jack and Felicia's for six months, sweeping the floors. In the hysteria of finding John's body, the 47-year-old Bovat made his way to the restaurant's register and stole $40 from it. Bobot was drunk. When police arrived, they arrested him on charges of larceny and drunkenness. Just days later, he would be sentenced to three months in the House of Corrections. It was nothing new for Bovat. He had spent the better part of three decades in and out of jail for multiple arrests for larceny and breaking and entering, stealing things like clothing, a typewriter, copper wire, and cash. By 1970, within three years after John's death, the restaurant liquor license was transferred to the then newly constructed Howard Johnson Restaurant and Hotel on Southbridge Street. The hotel was demolished in 1999. 
Today, the building at 731 Milbury Street no longer exists. The property is owned by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division. In the mid-1990s, the property made way for a ramp leading up to a pedestrian bridge connecting Milbury Street to Quinsigamon Village. Over Route 146 is part of the Milbury Street reconstruction and the new 146 connector. On October 19, 1967, John Zaromsky was buried at Notre Dame Cemetery. He left his wife Felicia, two sons, a daughter, and four siblings. John's murder is one of two unsolved murders from 1967 on file with the Worcester Police Department's detective unit. The other unsolved murder from that year is the murder of 21-year-old Sarah Cox in November 1967. We shared Sarah's story in episode one of this season. By 1968, a year after John Zaromsky's murder, Worcester police said they had little hope in bringing a suspect a murder trial. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please consider clicking the like button for us. And if you subscribe, the next episodes will show up in your feed. Click the bell on the right and you'll get a notification when the next episode is ready. If you have any thoughts you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. We do read them all and respond to as many as we can. Thank you for listening. I'm Dan Yeager. Anyone with information about the murder of John Zaromsky or has to contact the Worcester Police Detective Bureau at 508-799-8651 or send an anonymous text to 274-637. Write TIP WPD and your message or send an anonymous web-based message at worcestermagovernor forward slash police. Come back on Thursday when Season 2 of Unsolved Worcester continues with another murder on Milbury Street. This time we look at the unsolved murder of 26-year-old Eddie Wheeler in December 1998. Be sure to visit Unsolved Worcester on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Unsolved Worcester. Listen to all episodes for free at unsolvedworcester.com and podcast streaming platforms including Spotify, iTunes, and more. Special thanks to the Worcester Public Library, the Worcester Police Department, the City of Worcester, Ron Scott at New England Sky Picks, and our sponsors for making this possible. The Unsolved Worcester podcast music is provided by Tom LaBelzik of the Worcester Jazz Collective. This episode of Unsolved Worcester is written and produced by Pat Sargent. Drone footage provided by New England Sky Picks. Videography and editing by Colin Turner. Victim images are courtesy of the Worcester Police Department. Sponsorship information announcer Chandler Walsh. Be sure to check out the video for this episode with exclusive aerial views and more on our Unsolved Worcester YouTube page. Don't miss another episode. Click the notification button to get alerts when new episodes of Unsolved Worcester drop. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. This program is supported in part by a grant from the Worcester Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts. To find out more about how National Endowment for the Arts grants impact individuals and communities, visit www.arts.gov.